Hey guys, this is Spartan 117GW and we are here at AEX in Torrance in Southern California. I have the pleasure of having Alex Co. from PTS here. And we Hi. got a bunch of new products here that you're, uh, if you go to SHOT Show, you're going to get a glimpse of this. Uh, but we're recording it now because it's just better conditions right now. So yeah. we have a bunch of products starting from uh, over here. We have the Rails Centurion Arms uh, Rail Systems. Uh, you have the C4 style, which is the 7 inch and 9 inch. And you also have uh, this style right here, which is nice, low pro. Yeah. So this is the CMR, and um, you know we were looking at the real one earlier, and you can actually see that aesthetically it looks almost exactly, exactly the same, same <laughs> as, as the real thing, which is really cool. You know all the uh, pick rails on the sides and front, and all, uh, all the way around on the C4s as well as on the top of the uh, CMR rails. You know they're all mil spec. Everything's so, precisely seen. You know it's like everything. yeah, it's like they took a lot of time to make sure things are precisely done. Um, you know even little features such as like these threading holes. You know on the real one the front three threading holes are all reinforced. Mm -hmm. On the back uh, stretch over here and also along the bottom and also on the sides, you know, there's just simply threaded in. But that's exactly the yeah. same as it is on the real thing. I mean, that's great for the rail panels, for the, the covers that they're coming out with. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you know, obviously if you want to mount lights and stuff on the yeah. on the front end. And what's awesome is the fully yeah. functional um, Limited QD. rotation QD. QD. Yeah. yeah, so it's like, you know, here I got a <clears throat> mil-spec QD mount. Uh, I can install this. You know, and you'll see that that is limited rotation, which is exactly the same feature as, as how it is on the real firearm uh, accessories. Um, and then the other cool thing I really like about this is that PTS really considered, you know, what is it that needs to be done in order to have it sort of make sure that people know that this is for training and simulation. But it's still aesthetically pleasing. But aesthetically yes. pleasing, exactly. Because a lot of, you know, different manufacturers have gone about it in different ways. You know, what I really like about these is that if you look on the bottom of the C4 rails, mm -hmm. you know, where it says on the very, very bottom rail, it says for training simulation use only, and then you have the PTS markings. That mm -hmm. way you can't sort of mistakenly it think it's yeah. a real firearm. But it's not in some place that's just... Exactly. Blatantly Cause, obvious. Because, yeah. you know, the last thing you want is to be having a gun and then, like, holding it out of the middle of a game or whatever, and then everyone just see these big lettering on the side that says, This is fake. Airsoft. Yeah. You know, yes. it's just like, yeah, you know, yeah, some people do that. that. It's that, fun. That's what, but that's what brings PTS to the, uh, the higher echelons, you know, professional training and simulation. You know, it's got to be realistic. It's got to be authentic. Yep. But, you know, it's it's still for airsoft, but, you know, it really brings that, that new level of authenticity yeah. to the sport and to the the platforms themselves. Yeah, and the, all the laser engraving is really precisely done on the C4 rail. The for training and simulation use only is just on this bottom panel here as well as the PTS marking. So it's really nice and subtly done and uh, really nice hard anodizing. It looks just like the real thing. So we're really pumped about this. I use them on my real guns and uh, I think they're really badass rails. No, I like them too because as you can see, very nice low pro and very comfortable to shoot. Now we have the newest iteration of the LM4 PTR in the mega arms, and yep. as you can see, it's a beautiful, beautiful platform. You've been salivating on this thing oh, all over this thing ever since you got here. It's just like it's, it's, it's got beautiful. A, it's got a beautiful uh, one-piece upper, I and mean, the body is so well done. And you have this full functional key mod rail, functional. So it's yes. not just for looks. You can definitely use this with all your key mod accessories out there. Yeah. As, as you can see, it's beautiful. It's nice and sleek, and it really completes the look of the Mega Arms rifle. I really, you know, the thing is, when we looked at it, because the key mod spec, that's open source, you know, that's stuff that you can, that's that's commonly downloadable so that people can actually see what that spec is, and so they can build accessories accordingly to that, as well as rifle rails and whatever else. Um, some manufacturers, they don't actually do all the intricacies of what the key mod requires, which is the internal bevel. Yes, And exactly. um, that's really important if you're gonna mount stuff like, op like uh, things like uh, uh, lights and lasers and stuff that, because if you don't have the proper bevel, you know what happens is a really good jolt if you're coming through a doorway and it's bangs, gonna it's gonna, it, it can knock it off. I right? mean, that, that's what separates it from the competition too. I mean, you're getting mil spec, you know, key mod yes. system, like that's gonna work with all those products out there. And that, it's that extra level of authenticity that they're bringing. You know, the other thing I really love about this is the fact that, you know, in spite of the fact that it's not a true monolithic upper, it looks like a monolithic. Oh yeah, upper. I mean the body's just you know? perfectly form fitted to the rail. I mean it's they're really careful about the CNC. They really made sure everything is mated up together really, really tightly. No you wobble. know the no uninterrupted wobble. Picatinny all the way through, even though there's a separate, you know, rail to the upper receiver, it's really quite beautiful. The upper receiver uh, and, and the lower receiver, they're both billet style lowers, but they're all actually uh, CNC'd after to make sure that it's all precisely very sharp markings. If you feel the fit in it, between the upper and lower receiver, it's very, very tight. 
it's, they did a really great job. Really nice hard anodizing on the entire receiver. Uh, they really as adhered to the sort of accuracy of the aesthetics of what the real one was. Little details such as like the skeletonized trigger. Skeletonized trigger. It's all there, you know. I mean, the logos, everything's there. And what's great is that uh, because it's a PTR, uh, they, uh, the guys have been able to go back and you can actually manipulate the bolt down yes. too. Like that, exactly. so you can power stroke it. Big thing for us real steel shooters. Yeah. Oh, plus, you know, also the updated version of this upper receiver is the fact that, you know, prior versions of the LM4, they had sort of uh, multiple parts comprising of the upper receiver. Um, Yikai worked with us and they, they were refined the up, this upper receiver, so it's actually one piece upper. So that uh, anything like um, upper rail wobble and stuff like that for optics, that is all gone now. It's a really solid uh, it upper. Is, it is so solid compared to the original LM4 platform, which was already a great platform to begin with. Yes. This is this is leaps and bounds. You can really tell that this is the next thing for yeah. the LM4 series. So make yeah. sure you guys check it out. We're gonna take a real quick break to go over some other accessories, but we're gonna take a real quick break, real quick, so I can play with this a little bit more. All right, guys, we are back. We're gonna go over a couple more things that we uh, didn't talk about before. Now, the Mega Arms LM4, as you can see, it has these pretty awesome, actually it's like an A2 kind of style front sight post and rear sight. It also has you know, the grip as well. Yeah. And it comes with this really awesome saw mod stock. I'm a big fan of crane stock. So it's actually really nice to see that they've gone the extra length with including something like this. Because as everyone knows, the original LM4 had like a you know LE type stock. And I like the LE type stock. I actually, I actually really like the soft mod style stock too because I just find that it's got a really nice cheek weld. It's a very comfortable stock. You know, there's a reason why SF have been using it for years because it works, right? Um, it's a great stock. None of these accessories, because a lot of manufacturers will put like cheapy accessories on their guns and it feels cheapy, right? Um, then you end up replacing it anyways, right? And you replace yeah. it anyways. And the thing is, we put these, this sort of A2 style fixed front and rear sight and we put this soft mod stock and, and, the, and the grip. Um, uh, but none of it feels cheap, you know, it's, it all feels like really good quality stuff. It kind of, you know, reflects the quality of the rest of the gun, which is good. And if you choose to replace it, that's totally fine. That's a great thing about, you know, um, M4 style system is the fact that it can all be sort of upgraded to be a very unique style. Now on this particular gun, we have the uh, Griffin, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a second, but we have the Griffin, um, uh, uh, I believe it's muzzle brake. Mm. Muzzle brake. Yeah, Griffin Industries muzzle brake. Griffin Armament, sorry, muzzle brake. Um, it normally comes with an A2 style uh, flash hider. But one other thing I want to mention is the fact that the uh, listed MSRP, I believe, is 480, 485. Um, yeah, that's which, what, that, what you're getting. That's which a, is that's pretty great, incredible, that's right? A really good deal. Because the original um, PTS uh, LM4 was, was exactly the same pretty price, much. pretty much. But you're getting a much better package. I mean, I mean, full, full. Because the other one, I, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, Greg. I love my Magpul, uh, <laughs> my Magpul LM4. But this is incredible how much you get for the for the money on this. Oh thing. yeah, I mean, to, you if you were to build this up from a regular the LM4, seed. you'd be spending like six hundred, like a couple hundred bucks. You know, like. yeah, uh, it would not have been cheap. And I'm really impressed that they were able to do so much out of, out uh, of this box. entire system. You know, it's it, it's this is a really cool system. Um, now we also got a couple more comps here as well. Yes. Uh, Griffin armament has got a couple other cool ones here. So go ahead and tell us about some of these. Obviously, you've cool. seen this one we have on right on here, just because. So, so the really cool thing about Griffin Armament is they, they kind of design multiple different multi devices for different end users. Okay, so we're not going to go into the intricacies of each one, but you can essentially you know put whatever you feel uh, best reflects what you want to have on the gun. So um, right there on there on the MKM we installed the uh, Griffin Armament muzzle brake, which is the same one as this one. We also have the tactical comp the flash suppressor, and then the flash comp, and the flash comp's pretty cool. Kinda, I actually run that on my own, kinda, my own gun. Kind of balance of both. On my real gun, I actually run that, and it's, it's the, the idea is it's supposed to be a balance between the uh, traditional between uh, tactical compensator, compensator but have, and a, and flash with too. stronger flash so. suppression. Not perfect, but it's supposed to be uh, comparable to like an A2 flash suppressor, which is actually a really good flash suppressor, um, but it has some of the more traditional sort of uh, comp uh, sort of recoil management abilities, which is very, very cool. Um, yeah, if now, I recall, it shot really flat too. It, it's a really good muzzle brake. It's a good compromise, and oh, this yep. is actually the, the flagship product that they actually sell for the for the real market. Um, the suppressor too. Now that's really cool. Mock suppressor. Brand new for 2014. Um, a lot of people were asking us, "Hey, are you guys gonna make suppressors?" And I knew it was on the plan to make them. I just didn't know when it was happening. And the but, next thing I know, the sample came bam. out. I'm like, <laughs> it's just wow, you guys are moving pretty fast. 
So the really cool thing about this is the fact that this one suppressor, this is the M4SD2, uh, and this it comes in two different styles. It'll be a uh, U.S. Uh, import style as well as an international version. Um, but this particular suppressor, the cool thing about it, it can be installed on any one of any these one four of these. Griffin Arm muzzle devices. So that's so cool. You can put whatever you want, get the one muzzle device, uh, get the one suppressor, and just put it straight on. And it'll actually, yeah, you can it's cute. Yeah, let's just slide right this on right here, and then, boom. Yeah. Look how quick that was. It was great with some brands, depending on the style, like um, how uh, realistic their A2 uh, comp is, you can actually put this on an A2 flash hider. Again, depending on how well, uh, how authentic they are, but yep. it can go on some of those as well if you don't have one of these comps at home. But definitely great that you have one uh, suppressor that kind of covers a lot of your bases, right? Yeah, it really That's kind of, length too. and it, it really kind of uh, expands the whole um, brand for that particular PTS Griffin arm that we've been producing. Uh, we're going to be doing more that we'll be talking about in the future, but. Uh, but you know, for this particular feature set, for all these different items, you have muzzle brakes and you'll muzzle devices, and then flash you'll have suppressors and flash drives, whatever. It's like you can really kind of uh, tweak your gun to Pick look choose different, your cool, whatever you want. You know, you know, some people might want to put like a longer inner barrel so they have a little bit longer length. That's all up to them. I'm James C. Burns and play Sergeant Frank Woods in Call of Duty Black Ops 1 and 2. It's time for you to subscribe to Spartan 117 GW, baby. Elite Force BBs, that's what's in my mag. Thanks for watching.